um, everything is great on this side in a sense, you know, in the sense that we have life, you know what yeah. I mean? So we, we give thanks to that. You know, life is great. We give thanks. Yes, Rastafari. sir. Rastafari. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yes, my sister. Yes, so um, great. Yes, I uh, greetings once and once. Um, Molweni, Dumelang, Sanibonani. Greetings, your people. Welcome to the second edition of the Afro Diaspora Connection. Um, I'm your co host, God is Isis Love and Direct from Botswana in the motherland. Um, this week, uh, uh, we're touching on our discussion is centered around um societal i mean cultural stereotypes um our topic is uh the societal impact of cultural stereotypes and the unity agenda and how do we react towards these stereotypes and what is the best way to address them in our culturally diverse communities and can some of the societal ills that are currently ravaging the motherland be blamed upon these cultural stereotypes. But um, before we get into it, I would just like us to observe uh, a moment of silence for the victims of uh, gender-based vi gender violence that is currently going on and the victims of xenophobic attacks that are currently going on in South Africa, in Zambia, and in Nigeria. Yeah, we give thanks for life. Rastafari, yes, I give thanks for life every time. Yes, serious. Yeah, man. We heavily, yeah, we heavily condemn this this black on black violence that is currently going on. Whether we decide to call it gender based violence, it's still black man killing black woman, black man raping you know, black kids, black children and, you know, black man turning against black man. Our fellow African brothers and sisters are losing lives in a very senseless way currently in what is now called um, xenophobia. So, yeah, man, we, we don't condone such behaviors amongst I and I. Yeah, man, we condemn that straight away. Rastafari. Yes, and um, they, they, yes, I, so. they, I, they I talk about um, the, 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 the stereotyping and, and it's a serious thing because, you know, I was just talking about, um, you know, the same, the same type of issue, you know, here and, and, and also where I grew up in Jamaica, you know, it's black man killing black man. You know, same here in the UK, the black youths them killing the, the, the black black self. You know, it's the same xenophobic um behavior. And it's stereotypical in yeah, this in the in the sense where so you have this black and black crime. Yes, I and um, these things can re can easily be avoided, so we need to have such discussions because you know, we never know where the solution might come from, but we can't continue like this at all. No, it have to be it have to be some farmer. There have to be some change, you know, in a in a oh we can't dock yourself, you know. Have to be some change. Because, you know, killing a black brother in, in, in um in South Africa, you know, Nigerian brothers and sisters. You know, they're not there idling, sitting down, you know. They have to be working for you to say, boy, you know, they're stealing your jobs and stuff like that, you know. Yes, I and It's just, it's uh, misplaced anger and misplaced emotions to blame another, you know, brethren or sister and to say they're stealing your jobs. And, you know, everywhere in Africa belongs to every African, you know, I can't leave Botswana and go to South Africa 
and now start feeling like I'm a foreigner. Those are just um, terms that are used to confuse and divide us. You know, I can't go to, if I if I leave Botswana and go to Zimbabwe or Zambia or Malawi or DRC or Guinea Bissau, I just have to still feel at home and I don't have to feel any other way but feel it, feeling at home because I'm in Africa and I'm an African. Yes, I. Yeah, man, that must you know must feel a way. Yeah, so. Yes, my sister. So hopefully, when now. Yes, I. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, um, I want to um, you yes, know, you have some, you have some people log on from um. From in the United States, uh, Empress Charmian. Empress Charmian, I said, boy, you know, you know, it's it's that's that's why we can't rise as one, and so sad when we go into yes, rise as a nation. Empress Charmian. Yes, um, things. Um Bless up yourself, you know. Send in a voice note if you can. Yes, I um I just saw her her comment on the group and yeah, she can join us in the the discussion because she raised a vital point. Yes, I Celestia. Rastafari. Yes, my sister. Yeah, man, go through, man. We are, we are listening, you know. Yeah, so um, I wanted to touch base again on the the topic for today. I wanted to remind us ones and ones, but we are, we, we're going to be based our discussion on today. Um, today, we are tackling the issue of cultural stereotypes with regards to the unity agenda as in how do we react towards cultural stereotypes? What is the best way to address them, seeing that we live in a culturally diverse community or we live in culturally diverse communities? And can some of these societal ills be blamed upon these cultural stereotypes? Personally, I've, um, I won't say I've, I've uh, directly uh you know um experienced cultural stereotypes but I've indirectly and I've also seen people being stereotyped because of their certain race or their certain ethnic group or their certain tribal I mean tribe sorry. So this issue is really common within us as within us as black people because first of all uh, we, are, we are one race, yes, but uh, we have certain sects that divide us. And so, uh, amongst these sects, we have, I mean, we have seen things like stereotypes being bred out of, you know, who is that, who's that one, because you are from Botswana, you are popular for this, you are from South Africa, you are known to be this, you are from Zimbabwe, you get stereotyped to be a certain way, and you are from, you know, any other, any anywhere else in Africa, every every country, let me say, has a, a certain stereotype attached to it. So, without wasting any more time, we'll just get into uh, uh, the, the clips that uh, the people who, who took part in, in this week's discussion had to say about um, this topic. All right. Sometimes I make up my own stereotypes and assume that others hold them too. This can cause an illusion of separation when I am unable to maintain them. Even when I learn something that can defend my position, it can be hard to share because of the personal nature. Sometimes it's not necessary or possible to have a single straight jacket into which everyone must fit. 
cultural stereotypes can make it difficult to socialize in a setting where one has tried to mold themselves into something rare in a sea of indifference. The isolation can be made worse if one was already outcast from society or peer groups. We can opt to use cultural stereotypes as guidelines rather than as rules. Coping mechanisms can cause one to fall outside of a desired cultural group to the extent where unity is not even desirable anymore. There, one has to make the effort to change, having faith in the naturality of the stereotype. We should also use self-love and self-acceptance. Yeah, man. Yes, I. Yes, yeah, so um, I'm sorry that brother didn't um, uh, he forgot to introduce himself, but that was Bobo Paul, all the way from Botswana, and he touched base on. Firstly, he he did he defined in his personal capacity what, um, cultural stereotypes are, and he mentioned something like you know, being driven to be an outcast because or also not being able to fit in a in your peer group because you are from a set a different tribe or you know, outside of that peer group and then when they stereotype you you tend to be an outcast. And also he mentioned um the consequences of culture cultural stereo, stereotypes, sorry. Which which can can breed things like um, you know um, someone um, someone's not being able to fully uh, be who they are because they're afraid that they're going to lead to premeditated thoughts about you know because you are this then you are supposed to act like this because you are from this then you're supposed to be we know we already know that you're going to be like this and he mentioned a few things that can you know, try to address this uh, this problem. And he mentioned self-love, he mentioned self-acceptance, because if you love yourself, no matter who says what about you, and if you accept that that, that is who you are, nobody can come outside of anywhere and try to change, you know, that truth that you hold about yourself. So that's a very important um a point that you raised there, like, you know, it might seem like a small thing, but self-love and self-acceptance are ways in which this thing can be addressed. I don't think there's anyone who loves themselves who can, you know, uh, who can, you know, show any other vibration other than love, who can, like, maybe show hate to an extent of killing or to an extent of saying, oh, I know these ones, you know, say in a very negative way, talking about another person because they're from a different culture. Yeah. So yeah. give thanks, Jaman. Yes, I. All right. Peace. This is Dr. Yu from Washington, D.C., United States of America. And I have definitely experienced cultural stereotyping. I feel that the best way to get around that is to make sure that we get to know each other as individuals and also to make sure that we learn more about each other's cultures as well so that way the things that we do tend to stereotype can tend to be more accurate uh, and not offensive. Um, but definitely getting to learn people as individuals is very important. So that's my two cents, big shout outs to my sister Pomolo and to everybody listening. Peace and blessings. Bless up, bless up. Peace and love. Yeah man, peace and love. Rastafari. Yes, I yeah. yeah, that was my brother uh that was my brother Yuma. You know, another black man but based in, in Washington D C and you can see how broad this thing is. You know, he's also definitely experienced cultural stereotyping and you know he mentioned that it's very important that we learn 
to know each other as a people and not just used you know premeditations like i said or stereotype someone before you even get to know who they are so that you know your 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 truth about that person is is not offensive but accurate yes which in essence was saying that you know cultural stereotypes are very offensive and they tend mostly they tend to be inaccurate so give thanks Give thanks, you and shout out to you, my brother. Rastafari, more love and strength, man. Every time, you know, all the way from Washington. Yeah, so they had them see how the thing set up, you know, and I just, as I say, is is not just in Africa, you know. What I mean, this behavior, as you know, they had, they did I say earlier, you know, it's within I and I, but you know, how we develop, how we really develop, you know, that type of behavior, you know, where we get them behavior there from. You know what I mean? Yes, I this this also goes to show us that um you know the problems of African people are like what we can call collective problems. We all face the same problems, whether you are was in Washington, whether you are in Malawi, whether you are in Tanzania, as long as you are you are a black man or a black woman, our 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 conditioning and our problems are similar. Yeah, man. For real. For real. All right. Um, due to time, I could um, go in at the next uh, voice, voice note. Hello, um, good um, Africans, my fellow brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers. Um, I would just like to um, touch on the uh, topic of the um, social impact of cultural stereotypes and uh, the unity agenda that we ought to be um, singing the same tune of. Um, so my name is Kulane Sitole. I uh, currently live in the United Kingdom. Uh, I've been living here for a number of years. Um, so anyway, just to um, touch base about our topic, um, I think us as a people, black people, uh, to be specific, uh, have got a, a history of being divided, a history of uh, being tampered with, you know. So when we talk about um, cultural stereotypes, we are talking about uh, different cultures. So where you find, I'll make an example with, uh, with the brain, with the mind of the uh, human being and uh, the uh, actual conditioning of uh, that uh, muscle of of the brain so you see so it's not necessarily about where you're from or who you are and this that the other it's the level of conditioning that your your brain has uh, endured meaning for example if you take a person who uh, grew up in the um, in the village you know you will find that their mental conditioning is different of that uh, a person who has uh, been brought up in the uh, township you know their level of uh, thinking and the level of conditioning is totally different you know you will find that uh, the person as well who grew up in the township and the person who grew up in the suburbs um, in the suburban areas their conditioning is also different or maybe you might find that a person who's been exposed to uh, another country uh, whether it's uh, China or whether it's um, out in Asia, uh, whether it's in uh, the United States or whether it's in uh, in Europe, you know that person's mental level of conditioning is uh, is is different. You understand my point? So when we're looking at um, the cultural stereotypes. We are looking at um, a people who are not united. The minute we are having different cultures and uh, different agendas, we can never be united because another person would uh, 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 be pulling you towards, let's say, maybe a Dwana culture. The other person will be pulling you uh, towards, let's say, a Sisutu culture. Another person will be pulling you towards uh, a Shangani culture, uh, a Zulu culture, or a Kosa culture. You know which all of these are different cultures as a whole we all um, hold different um, 
beliefs upon uh, our own customs and our own cultures you know so the only way for us to unite would be to actually have one culture which is a, a black culture you know not to say that uh, we are promoting race uh, as, as as such but we are promoting culture meaning that It's not like somebody are fighting my youth. Uh, it might run from somewhere. Uh, we look out oh. for one another, you know, because if we are divided like this, uh, it becomes much easier to uh, get um, divided and then to uh, get uh, colonized, you know, because now it, 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 it's, uh, we had an area where it's uh, colonization through information. So meaning that the information that one holds dear as their truth could be in fact contaminated, meaning that you could be believing something that is truly and utterly uh, 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 not correct. You know, do you understand my point? But if that you hold it as your, your, your true core and you really believe that to the core, you can uh, actually die for it. You understand and then you could be possibly dying for the wrong reason or dying for the wrong race you understand my point so uh, what i'm trying to say here is that as africans we need to be united and as africans we need to let go of stereotypes uh yes you may want to believe uh, maybe for, of your background or of that of your, of your parents, which is absolutely fine. You need to accept and you need to believe it's absolutely fine. But the unity then comes uh, into action when you then forget about that and uh, uh, not actually to say forget, but to say to add on, you understand? So add on a universal understanding to the uh, black person because you will forever be black nothing would ever change about that but your mental conditioning might be of maybe a european or it might be of uh, an asian or it might be of uh, a different uh, a race maybe you might not even be aware of it but this is then of course the insider outside uh, challenge you know which means that the system that you are actually operating on uh, that you are using to think it may be in fact foreign to you so hence why we get a lot of uh, misunderstanding and we cannot actually channel our own thoughts so which actually means that your mind as a whole is captured thank you thank you for taking the time to listen and i hope this makes uh, some sense or a bit of um light uh yeah thank you very much have a lovely day and uh, have a good night Bye. yeah man thank you my brother <laughs> yeah um yes i yeah he had a lot to say he had a lot to say rastafari and in the interest of time i'll just um mention what he he said briefly and um, Basically, he was just telling us what um, what it is, what it means to him, and you know, try to relate it to other races and try to add, um, to highlight what might have caused this problem, you know, and then also came up with solutions. So I'll just add on to that that um, you know we can never go anywhere as a people if we're still focused on things like stereotyping each other and. You know, because those things are, are, are a great hindrance to progress. And for the longest time, it's, it's it looks like, you know, unity amongst us as black people is failing. And it's due to things like these, like cultural stereotypes, you know, 
that are delaying the unity agenda. So we need to get rid of these things. And we, we need to decolonize our minds of, you know, these stereotypes. And they have no place at all, you know. And uh, the only way we're going to have to, to, to address these problems is by you know, educating ourselves and, you know, learning cultural humility, remembering who we are, celebrating cultural diversity, and knowing that, you know, as African, if you see another African, you see your reflection. You don't see someone who's, like, totally different from you. Yes, we might do, you, we might do things, um, you know, different way, but the bottom line is we're all Africans, and, you know, our... Um, our race is one, and so we must always push for oneness and unity in all that we do, because without that, we'll never achieve anything that we try to do. Without unity, there's no progress. Give thanks, my Lord. Rastafari, yes, I do give thanks. Give thanks every time, my sister, you know? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah man, reality. Reality, 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 my sister. Yes, I. Yes, I. So. Yeah, it's a real. Yeah, man, it's a reality. You know, we're supposed Sorry? to love each other. You know. Yeah, we need to love each other. Not just for sure. We really need to to love each other. We need to love ourselves because that's where it all starts. I can't love you if I don't love myself. Seriously. Yeah, and we need to stop, you know, these senseless killings, you know, because we're perishing as black people and, you know, over, over very meaningless things. Choo-choo. Yes, sir. Over meaningless things. Yes. Yes, sir. yes, my sister. Well, we give thanks. Um, give thanks for the moment. We give thanks. Give thanks for the time. Due to time. Due to time. Yeah, blessed love. Yes, my brothers and sisters, the Afro Diaspora Connection. Yes, I the second edition with um co host Goddess Isis. And um I want to take the time out for thank the eye again for taking the time. You know what I mean? Yes, I and for large up everyone who really um a contribute um to this segment of the program. Zin. Yes, I. Rastafari. <laughs> 